1 Corinthians, For I have received from the Lord what I have given unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after you had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all in many parts of the world today that have been celebrating Ascension Thursday, 40 days since the resurrection. But in our area, we're celebrating the Ascension this coming Sunday. And because of that, today we're celebrating the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Our Lady appeared to the three children in Portugal back in 1917 and asked them for, uh, basically, to pray the rosary. Pray the rosary for peace in the world, and that message is still good. The rosary is a wonderful prayer, so let's pray the rosary always. And as we come together now to pray the greatest prayer of all, the prayer of Jesus to the Father, the Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our Savior. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have. You, Lord Jesus, you give us yourself in the Holy Eucharist. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for all the mothers whose names are on the Novena Mass uh, envelopes on the altar. O oh God, who chose the mother of your son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, 1 through 8. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussion into the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy, came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there, and he went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord, along with his entire household and many of the Corinthians, who heard, believed, and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song, the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. 
All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all ye lands. Break them to song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. says the Lord, I will come back to you and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, a little while and you will no longer see me. And again a little while later, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again a little while, you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, so they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Rosary has made many great saints. I remember Tim's mama. She was constantly praying the Rosary, right Tim? I, I remember visiting people in Ireland when I take Father Kinney's place. Some of those people, like all they do is pray the Rosary all day long for people. Uh, many people I remember visiting some of the, uh, the elderly people around here that are no longer with us and always praying the Rosary. So it's a fabulous prayer, and in Mexico also. Like in Mexico, very often they couldn't have a priest for you know funerals or stuff like that. So they'd say the rosary, and they'd do novena of rosaries, and they had rosaries for every occasion, and different versions of the rosary for every occasion. So the rosary kept the faith alive in Mexico for the, the many years when priests weren't allowed. So that's how they celebrated Christmas, and that's how they celebrate. Uh, births and, 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 and deaths and all that with the rosary. So the rosary is a very powerful prayer and the message of Our Lady of Fatima to the children to pray the rosary for peace in the world is a great prayer. And what, what I like about the rosary is it develops that personal relationship with God. You know, it develops that personal relationship with God and you can do it anywhere, anytime. And there's so many different versions of the rosary, scripture rosary, whatever. And I want to encourage you all, especially if you have children or grandchildren, try and get them to pray the rosary. Give them a rosary beads, give them the mysteries and, and all that. Teach them how to pray the rosary. But it's so important. And this is a real treasure we have. And, and, and I want to encourage everyone, as, our, uh, as Mary, the mother of God, encourage everyone to pray the rosary for peace in the world. And the gospel we have, well, first off, let me say about the first reading. I mean, Paul is known as the apostle of the Gentiles. He tried to preach to the Jews, but they wouldn't accept his message, so he went to the Gentiles. And uh, isn't it great that he did? Because that really opened up the church to everyone and, and all of us. We're all the Gentiles. We're, we're, all, we're, we're all the beneficiaries of Paul's decision, you know, to, to preach the gospel to us. And then... The apostles were confused, and I don't blame them. Honestly, we have the hindsight, and even still I'm confused. I was thinking this morning when I was going to the gym about this reading, and I was thinking, you know, here we are, Ascension Thursday, or 40 days since Easter. I wonder how did Jesus spend those 40 days? Because it's very mysterious, the whole thing. Like, he'd show up, they'd recognize him, recognize him with difficulty. Very often he'd eat with them, and he'd teach them. And then he'd disappear. He'd send them on a mission and disappear. And so it's very mysterious, the whole thing. Even heaven. Where is heaven? What's heaven like is very mysterious. And like, if you think about the resurrection on the last day, when body and soul are reunited in glory, I 
I mean, it's hard to figure it. So it's no wonder the disciples are confused. I'm confused too, you know. So I, I think there's a lot we, 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 we accept in, in faith. And, and, and we just have to trust because uh, we really don't know all the answers. And the apostles certainly didn't know the answers. And you can understand why they didn't understand about the resurrection. And why they, 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 they you know, because it never happened before. Never happened before that, that Jesus Christ would, uh, would rise from the dead. So it's understandable, the apostles not understanding how it happened. But the great news is we know that Jesus Christ rose and the apostles' grief was certainly turned to joy. They, they tell us they were incredulous with sheer joy and wonder when Jesus would appear. And is it any wonder? They knew that Jesus was the Christ, the fulfillment of all the Old Testament. They knew Jesus was the resurrection and the life. They knew that death was conquered in Jesus Christ. So that's why we celebrate today the great love of God for us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for Herman Nilet and Groverine Jones' brother. May God grant him eternal rest and peace and to their families hope and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our sick, especially those dealing with cancer. May they find a vaccine for all cancer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all people traveling by sea, land, or air, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the successful completion of our new church and for all our workers for their safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing on all our quad members, and we pray that we can get our young people from 17 to 30 involved in the quad so they can grow deeper in their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank God for this day. May we always pray the rosary and know that God loves us through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we extol and bless your name, and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. This weekend, Gail will be talking about the Cappadocian Fathers. One of them is St. Gregory of Nazianzus, born in the year 330. This is what he said about the Holy Eucharist. 
without shame and without doubt. Eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ if you are desirous of true life. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when his once for his disciples are now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to supper, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was in, and he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the past and sacrifice of Christ, who has been handed down to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people of nature own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new home. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dangerous faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Mindful of the coronavirus, let's offer each other sign of Christ. Peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restored us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this pastoral sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for me. today is on the reading Acts 18, 1 through 8, Paul's mission in Corinth. Corinth connects the two parts of Greece, the Peloponnesian Peninsula and the mainland of Greece. It was a wealthy commercial center which attracted people of every stripe from all over the Roman Empire and was considered morally corrupt. So the moral degradation and confusion in the culture of Corinth provides the backdrop of Paul's arrival with his astounding message, there is salvation and freedom from sin in Christ. He was a tent maker. We read that upon arriving in Corinth, he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul stayed with them because they were tent makers and leather workers, makers of tents and awning. So Paul worked with them during the week and on Saturdays, and he preached the gospel in the synagogue on, on the weekend. In his letters, Paul emphasized the fact that he supported himself by doing manual labor because he wanted to distinguish himself from philosophical and religious leaders and teachers who charged the fee for their teaching and whose aim was personal gain. He may have been making tents but I bet he wasn't talking about the price of tents. You can be sure that Paul was talking about Jesus. Of course, he was trying to convince the Jews and the Gentiles of the truth of the gospel. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul's pattern changed. It's believed they brought him financial support so that he was able to immerse himself in the preaching of the gospel to the Jews. However, they began to contradict and insult him. And in response, Paul shakes out his garments as Jesus had instructed, whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet was shake off against you. Paul follows this gesture with a declaration similar to that of the prophet Ezekiel. Your blood be on your heads I am clear of responsibility. My mother used to say something similar to me when I was not responding to her strong criticism of my behavior. She would say, I've prayed for you. Now I've decided to turn you over to the Lord. <laughs> when I got turned over to the Lord, I knew I was in big trouble. <laughs> Unlike the Jews, my response was usually very quick and very positive. Paul is, as ever, undaunted. He turns his attention to the Gentiles. He goes to the house of Titus Justus, which is conveniently next to a synagogue. So as he continues to preach, his message is still accessible to Jewish listeners. A prominent Jew comes to believe in Jesus, Crispus, the synagogue official, along with his entire household was converted to Christianity and baptized. 
Paul actually spent a year and a half in Corinth because God spoke to him and told him to keep speaking, that he would not be attacked or harmed. God felt that there was still much to do in Corinth. My reflection on this reading is this. The disciples did as they were told. They preached the gospel of Jesus. They went everywhere they went, and they knew probably they would die for it. So many of the apostles did. Paul never quit talking about Jesus. He was flogged twice, stoned, beaten with rods, but he kept talking about Jesus, witnessing, establishing churches. Even when he was in a crowded prison cell, he never quit. I had to ask myself, when did I quit? I tried to remember at what point did I begin to feel uncomfortable speaking about Jesus. Was it when it became politically incorrect to speak about religion because we might offend someone? I was a teacher at Delgado Community College in New Orleans, and I taught art history for nearly 30 years. The first semester of my course dealt mostly with Christian art and architecture. The last 10 years that I taught this course, students began to ask for a study sheet about Jesus, Madonna, the Last Supper, the Passion, all subjects of paintings, mosaics, and stained glass. They didn't know who they were. They wanted a definition. They, never been, they had never been to church and had no clue about Christianity or its subject matter. I began to realize our world was changing and fast and there were quite a few people that simply never had heard of Jesus. It wasn't a matter of they just didn't go to church. They really didn't know. And they didn't know anything about the Bible. They thought Madonna was a rock star. One day, a student came to me after class, which students often did, except he wasn't asking about the flying buttress or what would be on the next exam. He said, Mrs. Donnellan, am I a Christian? It caught me totally off guard. I knew him well because he was a student worker in our department. And I asked him, Gary, do you believe in Jesus? He said, yes. So I continued. Do you believe he's the son of God? Yes. Do you believe in the resurrection? Yes. Do you go to church? He said, I think I'm a Catholic. He said he didn't go to church, but his parents used to, and he did his first communion. Then they moved, and they quit going, so he never went again. I said, Gary, you're a Christian. He was so happy. I invited him to my church, but I never saw him there. And I lost contact with him because he transferred the next semester. Much later, I heard he married a lady with children. And a few years after that, I saw him and his family at mass at our church. I could not have been happier. Maybe I had said the right thing, or at least I hadn't discouraged him. Obviously, I'm no St. Paul. I am so grateful for the Discipleship Pod, a group of four people coming together once a week to pray, talk, and talk about Jesus and our mission as disciples. I pray I never stop talking about Jesus. Excellent, May. And I was at a party last night, and Ronnie Lafontaine said to me, he said, Join in the quad has the best, it was the best thing I have ever done in my life. Isn't that something? Ronnie Lafontaine. I told him I'd call him. Sorry, I have. But, but, but it, it's fantastic. And people are loving the quad, especially people that follow the quads. You know, uh, you know, you have to go by the by the outline. You have to do your homework. You have to do your reading. But if you stick by their plan, it's an excellent plan. And want to encourage all the people watching this. Love to see people in Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, England, Wales, Scotland. You know, get get get, get going on the cause. The material is all free, and uh, it's really beautiful. All the the great feedback we're getting on it here. The one area where we're weak in our church is the 17 to 30 year old. So all of you in quads, try and recruit some 
17 to, through 30 year olds and try and get them into quads so that we can get them. That age group really has really missed out and that's what May is talking about. The college age level, you know, they, 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 really, they really don't have that, that, that background on Jesus. So we really need to reach out to the young people especially. You know, you don't have to go to Corinth. Right here at Most Holy Trinity, you have plenty of opportunities to be missionaries. Got a cute email here. The big city non-denominational church sent a female pastor to serve in an old country church. And the local elders were having a hard time accepting their new minister. But they wanted to be gracious, so the board invited the pastor to join them on a fishing trip. Once at the lake, the group got into the boat and motored out about 50 yards from shore when the pastor announced apologetically, I'm so sorry. I forgot my fishing rod. She stepped out of the boat, walked across the water to the bank, and picked up her equipment and walked on the water back to the boat. Just like a woman, one of the elders muttered, always forgetting something. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. Go and make disciples. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and give them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be free, and we shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O oh God, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, and instruct our hearts to the faithful. For I that by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise in your rejoicing. Thank you.